Okay, here we go. Tap the screen, share it live. Hi, Amanda. Namaste, namaste. I love that quote. You know, I'm, I'm making, um, very soon I'm gonna be making uh, uh, logos, namaste logos with ceramics and selling them on eBay. I think it'd be a, a great business. <laughs> okay, everybody ready for this? Uh, tap the screen, share it live. I'm telling you, tell your friends. There's only two people in here right now, but tell your friends, you're gonna love this. Here we go, Saturday, October 7th, 2023. This is how will the Messiah return? You've never heard anything like this, all right? You've never heard anything like this. I am the principal project on TikTok. My name is John, and here we go. The Bible and New Truth. What did Jesus say in John 16? Thinking caps on, seatbelts fastened, here it comes. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. All truth. For he will not speak of himself, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will show you the things that are to come. Jesus promised there was going to come a time in the future when he was going to share all truth. Not just a little bit more truth, but everything. It's all going to come out. In the same chapter, 25th verse, these things have I spoken to you in Proverbs, but the time comes when I shall no more speak to you in Proverbs, but I'll show you plainly, <laughs> hey, plainly of the Father. Today we're going to see plainly of the Father. We're going to see plainly of the Father. Adam and Eve, according to Scripture, we're, we're, we're talking about the Old and New Testament today. We're going to be, give you an explanation of the Old and New Testament that you haven't heard before. Adam and Eve were in the ideal. They had a fall of some sort, which we will talk about at another time. Uh, they had a fall. God begins a restoration providence right away. 2,000 years later, Moses comes with the Ten Commandments. 2,000 years later, Jesus comes with the New Testament Gospels. Jesus is assassinated for all practical purposes and says he has to come back again. We have just crossed over the 2,000 year barrier. We are in 2023 now. We are overdue for a major explosion of truth in the world. Right now there should be some kind of major expression of God's truth on the global scale. These time periods are almost to a day. 2,000 years. Every 2,000 years God blows, <laughs> blows a gasket and reveals new truth. Alright? So we're in that time because God is trying to bring back the ideal. If you take the word history, divide it into two words, you get his story. Doesn't prove anything, no. However, it does give food for thought that perhaps history is not just a random series of disconnected events, but God's action through time. God's action through time. Who's the driver of history? It could be the living God. Tap the screen, share it live. <clears throat> Angela Heck, welcome. We're talking about the second advent and how will the Messiah come? You have never heard anything like this before. Stick around, share the life. Tell your friends, tell Uncle Harry and Aunt Betty what's going on. The second advent. So ultimately, we want to answer several questions. Everybody wants to know how, when, where will the Messiah come? However, today we will answer one of those three questions to your satisfaction. Tap the screen, share the live. How will the Messiah return? But Bafuna says, but, but the Bible says, the Bible says, but of that day and hour knows no man. No, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. What? What? The angels don't know. Even Jesus said, I don't know when I'm coming back. <laughs> what? Where's that in the Bible? Bafuna says. Where's that in the Bible? It's right here, Bafuna. Mark 13, 32. I can't make this stuff up, nor would I. <laughs> Playing with the Bible is a, is a dangerous profession, okay? Gold Peak Iced Tea, yum. I wish they were uh, an, uh, an advertiser. <laughs> Jesus clearly foretold of his return, yet he added that no one 
knew of the day and hour. Give me that back. <laughs> Clearly foretold his return, yet he had that no one knew of the day and the hour of his return, not even himself, except God. Only God knows. Nevertheless, we can deduce from the scriptural verse, surely the Lord God does nothing without revealing his secret to his servants, the prophets, Amos 3, 7, that God will surely reveal all secrets about the second advent before he carries out his work. He's not going to leave us in the dark. Tap the screen, share the live. Come on, let's get some folks in here. Windows 98. No, that's Office 365. <laughs> Thank you very much. Can you do this? <laughs> God will also, however, give illumination to those of open heart and mind, the meek of the earth. The only people that followed Jesus in any kind of artistic or, or deep way were the downtrodden, the poor, the, the people that didn't have many options, that were just beaten up by life. Those are the kind of people that can receive God's word, right? It takes a simplicity of heart, a humility of heart. Peter says, God resists the proud, but bestows grace upon the humble. God resists the proud, but bestows grace upon the humble. The humble. Welcome, deconstructionist. Uh, only the TikTok people can see this. <laughs> yeah, uh, many people are coming out of the Christian world now because God is trying to bring people out of their ossified understanding the same way Jesus tried to bring Israel out of its ossified understanding of the Old Testament 2,000 years ago. God is trying to bring people out of ossified understandings. Christianity is divided into 400 different denominations centered on the same book. How does this happen? How does this happen? Everybody claiming to be the right way. So, let's get back to our question. How will the Messiah come? Tap the screen. Share the live. Did you know that there was a second coming of Elijah? There was. See, SpongeBob is diligently flipping through his Bible to see where that is. There are certain lessons learned from the second coming of Elijah that we can apply to the second coming of Christ. In 2 Kings 2.11, it says, It came to pass, as they well, still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up into the whirlwind into heaven. 2 Kings 2, all right? So, this is a flowery way of saying somebody of great importance died and went to be with God. It's a flowery, Elijah did not climb into a chariot, he did not go up in the sky. It's flowery symbolic imagery of someone important going to be with God. There he goes. Now Malachi comes 800 years later in the fourth chapter, fifth and sixth verse, and says, oh my goodness, this is so critical to understand. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Interesting. Tap the screen. Share the live. Thank you for the joins. Come on in. Come on in. The water's warm. I'm telling you, hang out. Hang out. This is going to blow your mind. Now, Again, we're talking now about the lessons learned from the second coming of Elijah. Elijah came twice, all right? Malachi 4, 5, and 6. Elijah ascends into heaven in 2 Kings. The prophet Malachi foretold that Elijah would return before the coming of the Messiah. Therefore, most Jews assumed that Elijah, who had ascended into heaven in 2 Kings 2.11, would descend from heaven in the same way that he had gone. The Jews had expected and anticipated, well, if he went up, according to the scripture, into heaven, and Malachi says he's coming back, they put two and two together, okay, he's coming back, boom. But what was the reality? What actually happened on the ground, tap the screen, share the live? Come on, let's get some folks in here, man. Is it ever mentioned what color Jesus is? <laughs> Who knows? He was Hebrew, so <laughs> I don't know if there's a general, a general uh, uh, the, the question is, is it ever mentioned what color Jesus' eyes were? <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, there's something in the Bible that says that uh, in the Old Testament, predicting Christ's coming, he was nothing to look at. Like he wasn't a really extraordinarily handsome man. Probably very plain, actually. So, this is really important. The reality, what's the reality? The reality is in Luke 1, Elijah returns. Most people do not know this. Elijah returns. What does it look like? The angel said to him, now Zechariah is the high priest. Tap the screen, share the lie. 
Zechariah is the high priest of Judah, right? And he's doing his responsibility, burning incense in the temple. Gabriel the angel appears to him and says, the angel said to him, fear not, Zechariah, for your prayer is heard. Remember, him and his wife were old and they were beyond childbearing years. They're praying for a son. Gabriel the archangel comes to him and says, your wife Elizabeth shall bear you a son and you will call his name John. And you shall have joy and gladness and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and he shall drink neither wine nor strong drink and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. This is apparently a very important person. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. Elias and Elijah are interchangeable. It's like John and Johnny. Same thing. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Complete fulfillment of Malachi 4, 5. Tap the screen, share it alive. We have not even started. You better tell your friends. Tell your friends. Get your buddies, your Christian buddies. Get them over here. We are going to tear this up. So, the Jewish people are expecting Elijah to come from the sky because Second Kings said he went up into the sky. Malachi comes back 800 years later and said he's coming back. So they're assuming he's going to come from the sky. What is the reality? Matthew 11, 13 and 14. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you will receive it, this is Elias which was for to come. Jesus clearly equates John the Baptist with Elijah. Elijah is John the Baptist. There's no way around this. It doesn't stop there. Jesus goes on in Matthew 17 to verify this point. The disciples asked him, saying, Why then do the scribes say that Elias must first come? This tells you two things about the disciples. Number one, they knew nothing about Scripture. Jesus' disciples are asking him, Why do the scribes say that Elias must first come? Because the Jews know Malachi 4 says Elijah must come first. And two, this tells you that the scribes and Pharisees and the Sadducees were coming around Jesus behind Jesus' back and trying to pull his disciples away from him. So, hey, your boss can't be the Messiah. There's no Elijah. Jesus answered and said, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you, Elias is come already. This is the 17th chapter of Matthew. John is already unalived. He's in prison in Matthew 11. By 17, he's gone. Remember that? They knew him not, but have done unto him whatever they listed. In other words, whatever they wanted, they did that to John the Baptist. Then Jesus says something ominously prophetic. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Amazing. Jesus, no. Without John the Baptist, Jesus is dead man walking. There's nothing to keep him alive. He can do miracles until he's blue in the face. Nobody's going to listen to him without Elijah, without John the Baptist. Why is this so important. Why is this Elijah thing so important? Well, it's so important that the Jews put out since the fourth century, Jews put out a, a cup of Elijah at every Seder feast. Tap the screen, share the live. We have not even started. Oh my goodness. Since the fourth century at the Seder feast, they put out a cup of Elijah. Why? Because for them, Elijah has not come yet. They put out a seat for Elijah. Why? This is called a circumcision seat. Every time there's a circumcision, they put a chair out because Elijah should supervise every circumcision. It doesn't stop there. At the Seder feast, they leave an empty place and a plate for Elijah just in case he shows up. This Elijah thing is really, really important. Really important. And it figures in to the life and, and unaliving of Jesus and John the Baptist. It doesn't stop there, boys and girls. <laughs> Jesus, the question is, if Jesus exists, why is he never around? Because you never asked him into your heart. That's why. If you open your heart, ask Jesus to come in and wait. Don't, if you're not instantly illuminated, don't worry about it. Go about your business. That happened to me in 1972. They leave the door open just in case Elijah comes in. Isn't that amazing? And they actually go to the door 
and say, Elijah, come. Amazing. This is deeply ingrained in Jewish culture. Right? Back to our story. Tap the screen. Share the live. Jesus is the only way to be saved in the eternal life. You should join this Catholic church. <laughs> I was raised Catholic. I was raised in an Italian, Irish, New York family. <laughs> I love the Catholic church, actually. So, now, here we go. We're talking about the second coming of Elijah. The significance of the second coming of Elijah. Right? Tap the screen, share the live. The biblical prophecy showed Elijah coming from the sky, 2 Kings 2.11 and Malachi 4. This was the expectation. The Jews expected a celestial event, which did not happen. Because in Luke 1.17, Zechariah says, your son is going to be Elijah. Matthew 11.14, Jesus verifies that John the Baptist is Elijah. In Matthew 17, verify, Jesus verifies again, a second time, John is Elijah. The expectation? From the sky. Expectation from the sky. Re what actually happened? Born on earth. Oh my goodness. Tap the screen, share the live. We're not done. Comparison. Here's the comparison. Different name, different person, same mission with the spirit and power of Elijah. This is so important. This is so important when talking about the life and death of Jesus and John the Baptist. All right? So, the point is the expectation was from the sky. The reality, born on earth, different name, different person, same mission. John the Baptist has the same mission that Elijah did. Now, it gets down, the rubber hits the road in John 1. And this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? And he confessed and denied not, I am not the Christ. For him to answer like that, they must have asked him, Are you the Christ? Top screen, share live. They must have asked him the question. Why would they ask him such a question? What gave them the, the, the thought that John the Baptist might be the Messiah? I'm going to turn on another fan. Oh. Hot in San Diego today, but I'm just fired up. Why would they ask him such a question? There's a very, very good reason why they would ask him that question. Because of Luke 3.15. And as the people were in expectation and all men mused in their hearts of John, whether he was the Christ or not. The Jewish people of the time actually thought that John the Baptist might be the Messiah because of the miraculous nature of his birth. Right? So... He's, they ask him, are you the Christ? He says, I am not the Christ. Very good, John. <laughs> Way to go. Primo. <laughs> All right. Then they ask him another question. Then they ask him the question. God, show me who I am. Why he questions you. <laughs> ja, ja, like the life. Thanks for the likes. Here we go. They ask him. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elias? And he said, I am not. They asked him a second time. Are you that prophet? Because someone has to be unalive today. There's a false prophet running around from the Jewish perspective at the time. One of you guys, there's something wrong with you. It's either Jesus or you, but we've got to resolve. They sent the Levites. They sent the Levites, the priestly class, because this has to be adjudicated from the Old Testament, from the law. We have to have the brainiacs have got to figure this one out because someone's going to lose their life. And he said, no. John the Baptist is asked twice, are you Elijah? And he denied it twice. We have already talked about the fact that John was verified twice in Matthew 11, 13 and Matthew 17, 11, that John the Baptist was indeed the Elijah. Indeed, Elijah. Why did he leave John like that? He didn't leave John. John left him. <laughs> John left him. That was the problem. I am the true son of God. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I am too. Okay. So, how was Christ expected the first time? According to Isaiah 9, 6 and Daniel 7, 13, Christ was expected, uh-oh, from the clouds. 
from the cloud. There's those clouds again. But the reality, Micah 5.2, but Bethlehem Ephratah, out of the thousands of cities of Judah, out of you will come a governor. All right? Isaiah 7.14, a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son. A virgin shall conceive. And then 2 John 1 says, Antichrists are people that don't believe Christ come in the flesh. So the, the, the coming of Christ the first time is a very practical, on-the-ground expectation. What was the expectation? Again, look at that. Oh my, my goodness, the parallels are uncanny. Tap the screen, share the live. The expectation was from the sky, but what happened with Jesus? Uh-oh, uh-oh. Just like John the Baptist, born on earth. Born on earth, oh my goodness. Born on earth. Was not fully recognized as the Messiah by John the Baptist, persecuted, and ultimately crucified. All right? Now, seat belts fastened, thinking caps on, because here it comes. Here it comes. <laughs> I've never seen someone so dedicated to explaining a fairy tale. Well, stay with me, P. Diddy. Stay with me. <clears throat> this is actually a really stripped down lecture. I've, 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 I've thrown out about an hour's worth of material just to get it down to something uh, easily transmittable on TikTok. John, simply through the force of his reputation and authority, could have led everyone to Jesus and thus to the world in short order. Jesus Christ was not supposed to die the way he did. He was supposed to live to a ripe old age. Why? Jesus is over here, John the Baptist is here. What is significant about John the Baptist? Tap the screen, share the live. What's significant about John the Baptist? He's just John the Baptist, one little guy, but no. Oh, no, no, no. John the Baptist has 120 disciples around him. Around the disciples is the nation of Israel thinking he's the Messiah. Uh-oh. Israel is occupied by the Roman Empire. And the adage of the time was, all roads lead to Rome. All roads lead to Rome. Let that sink in just a second while I take a drink of my Gold Peak iced tea. I wish they were an advertiser. Yeah, I would make them a mint. John didn't give up. He did give up. He was pressured by his disciples to alienate himself from Jesus, to, to separate from Jesus. And there's a way to prove that, too. Jesus Christ is forgiving adultery in one part of the town, forgave a woman caught in adultery, and then John the Baptist goes right into the court of Herod the king and accuses him of adultery with his brother's wife. And then John is unalived a couple of days afterwards. Once that happens, Jesus is unalived man walking. So this is what should have happened. Jesus and John the Baptist together, together, should go to the Israel level. Boom. From there to Rome and from Rome to the world. What would have happened if Jesus would have been allowed to live? What would the world be like today? We have to ask ourselves that question. John, that's all John did was witness what the prophets spoke of. He didn't do anything about it. He just said, this is, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And then there's nothing, they never do anything together again. <laughs> they never do anything together again. And then John is unalive very shortly after. <clears throat> Seatbelts fastened, thinking caps on, here it comes. There was a man sent from God whose name was John whose name was John. The same came for a witness. This is John 1, 6, and 7. Seatbelts fastened. The same came for a witness. Who, what same what? John. To bear witness of the light. Who's the light? Jesus, of course. That all men through him might believe. John the Baptist is supposed to bring all of Israel to Jesus, and then Israel brings Jesus to Rome, and Rome brings Jesus to the world. This is the new revelation that's coming all over the planet right now. This is being revealed. Brand new understanding of the New Testament. God is doing now in Christianity what Jesus tried to do to Judaism 2,000 years ago, to bring them out into something new. Jesus said, I am the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. Trying to bring them out of this ossified, rock-concretized belief. But they wouldn't do it. 
He said, you, you strain at a gnat and, and swallow a camel. You search the scriptures because in them you think you have life, but they testify to me. Nobody was listening. Nobody paid attention. So what happens? 1 Corinthians 2, 7 and 8. Seat belts fastened, thinking caps on. But we speak the wisdom of God in the mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Seat belts fastened. Here it comes. Ears open. Mind open, heart open, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, known what? The hidden wisdom. They would not have crucified the Lord of glory. I can't make this stuff up. 1 Corinthians 2, 7 and 8. Look it up. You think I'm making this stuff up. They would, if they would have known the hidden wisdom, which was don't unalive the Messiah, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. So what happened? Once Jesus is crucified and John the Baptist is gone, Boom! They're gone. The disciples are all unalive, one at a time. Israel is wiped out by the Romans in 70 AD under, the, under Titus and the Roman legions. Roman Empire is destroyed by the 4th century and the world goes into the Dark Ages. Did he just say that? I think he did. Tap that screen. No one believes me, so guess what happens? God created evil. Came <laughs> no, God did not create evil. <laughs> Someone says, God created evil. No, it's like Pandora's box. Pandora's box is there, but if you don't open it, nothing comes out, right? There's the potential for evil. If, if Adam and Eve don't follow God's commandment to not eat the fruit, it's like denying gravity. You only prove it when you walk off the second floor and hit the ground. Jesus, God says, don't eat the fruit. They decided to eat the fruit. <laughs> then all kinds of hell breaks loose. All right? So, now, how is Christ now expected to come? Matthew 24, 30. There's those clouds again. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Uh-oh. There's those clouds again. We've already had an encounter with the clouds twice. And the coming of Elijah... And the first coming of Christ, those clouds are symbolic. Clouds are symbolic. Thank you for the follows, Mike. <laughs> oh, I, I, can't, I can't roll the chat back, unfortunately. Hey, Frank. How you doing, Frank? Happy Saturday. Hope... <laughs> I guess, I guess that uh, environmental conference is over now. <laughs> God. Let's see what Jesus said about all this in Revelation. Everybody ready? Seatbelts fastened, thinking caps on. You better, you better be seated for this one. This is where the rubber hits the road, okay? Oh my goodness, tap that screen, share the live, because here it comes. Get ready, Frank. <laughs> Get ready. Yeah. In the book of Revelation... Much of the content is being delivered by Jesus himself. You look in a red letter edition, such as the great Schofield reference version that I have, much of Revelation is in red because Jesus is speaking. Seat belts fastened, thinking caps on. I better take a drink of my tea before this one. Oh my goodness. Verse 1 says the following. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to, unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John. So, what's going on here? This is going from God to Jesus to the angel to John. Order is everything. Who is speaking? Ultimately, it's God, of course, but Jesus, in the red letter editions of the Bible, this is Jesus, the word of Jesus coming down. This figures in large in the next few scriptures. All right. Ready? Here we go. Oh, my goodness. Seatbelts fastened, thinking caps on, tap the screen, share it live. Oh, my goodness. Revelation 2.26, you ready for this? He who overcomes, and remember, this is Jesus speaking. He who overcomes and does my will to the end. Whose will? Jesus' will. To him will I give authority over the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. 
as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my Father. Jesus is going to impart some kind of power to someone else. I will also give him the morning star. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Wait a minute. What's the morning star? Ready? The morning star is described very clearly. Revelation 22, 16. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and offspring of David, seat belts fastened, and the bright and morning star. Jesus said, I'm going to give him the morning star. He's talking about somebody else. Somebody else, to, somebody tap that screen and, and, and share the live. We're not done. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. Morning star. Uh-oh. Revelation 2.17. Here we go. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes will I give to eat of the hidden manna. And I will give him a white stone and in the stone a new name written which no man knows except he who receives it. Let that sink in, boys and girls. We're going to explain it in detail in just a second. Let's read that again. He who has an ear to hear, you have to be able to hear. You have to have your, your spiritual ears open to, dis, to receive this kind of thing. To him who overcomes will I give to eat of the hidden manna and give him a white stone. And in that stone, a new name written, which no man knows except he who receives it. What is the hidden manna? It's very clear what the hidden man is. John 6, For the bread of God is he which comes down from heaven and gives life unto the world. Jesus is not coming from the sky. He comes from a holy place of God. It's not a geographical location. This is what Christians have been getting wrong for 2,000 years. It's not a geographical location. It is a place of holiness. The bread of life. So Jesus is saying in Revelation 2, 17, I will give him to eat of the hidden manna. This is hidden. This is not widely and publicly known, right? And then he goes again further to say, I will give him a stone with a new name written. What's the stone? 1 Peter 2, 4, Christ equals the living stone, the chief cornerstone. He's talking about the Messiahship. 1 Corinthians 10, 5, the rock was Christ. Stone means the role of the Messiah. Stone means the role of the Messiah. Oh my goodness. You ready for the last one? Mm. Hey, Daddy. None of, here, here's the statement from Daddy here. None of this is actual truth. It's just something y'all say to make y'all feel better. No, this doesn't make us feel better. <laughs> this is an interpretation of the New Testament, okay? That's all it is, all right? This is a brand new interpretation of the New Testament. You came in kind of late on the game here. <laughs> no such thing as, no such thing, no such, oh boy. <laughs> Tick tock. Here we go, guys. Revelation 3.12, look out, here it comes. Him that overcomes, remember, Jesus is speaking. Him that overcomes, will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. I, who? Jesus, red letter edition. I will write upon him, somebody else, the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem. There's going to be a new Jerusalem, interestingly enough, which comes like the capital of the kingdom of heaven, which comes down from my God from heaven, and I will write upon him, seat belts fastened, here it comes. You ready? My new name. Jesus said this, not me. Not me. Look it up. Look it up. Came straight out of that. Straight out of there. Jesus is passing on his mission to somebody else. And the clincher. Revelation 19, 11 through 16. Here it comes. And I saw heaven opened and behold, 
a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. Many crowns. This is a king of kings. Not just a president, not just a king, not just a prince. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he has on his vesture and his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Daddy says, You'd have just as much success trying to find meaning in life by reading Harry Potter. Well, you've never read the Bible. If you read the Bible with any kind of a serious heart or a humble heart, your life would be completely changed. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. So here we go. So, conclusion. How will the second advent actually take place? Here's, here's the track record already. Expectation from the sky, reality on earth. Expectation from the sky for Jesus on the first time, born on earth. Second coming, Revelation 1-7, the clouds, Matthew 24-30, the clouds, 1 Thessalonians 4-16, clouds, clouds, clouds. Those pesky clouds are here again. Those pesky clouds are here again. Ah, very good, Frank. You're a good man. Um, I gotta, I gotta find out where you are, man. Uh, we gotta talk. <laughs> You're a good man. <laughs> okay, expectation again. Second coming. Everybody's waiting for the for the clouds again. Expectations here. Born on born on the earth. Well, we already said the Messiah is going to have a new name. Somebody else is coming. Jesus is not returning personally. He has passed the mission on to someone else, according to Scripture, not according to me. This is my idea. Revelation 12, 5, and she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Messiah will be born on earth. And her child was caught up into God and to his throne. Oh my goodness. Conclusion. At Christ's return, born on earth with a new name. Just like Elijah, just like Jesus, just like now. Remember, this is a new time. Jesus said, new truth was coming. I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he hears, he will speak and show you the things that are to come. These things have I spoken to you in Proverbs, but the time comes when I shall no more speak to you in Proverbs, but I will show you plainly of the Father. If we haven't seen plainly of the Father here today, I don't know what is. I don't know what is. I didn't make any of this up. This came straight from Scripture. Boom. Remember, this is the time period we are in. Adam and Eve had a fall. 2,000 years later, Moses comes with the Ten Commandments. 2,000 years after that, Jesus comes with the New Testament Gospels. 2,000 years later, we are now in the completed Testament age. Every 2,000 years, God reveals a new stage of his providence. Every 2,000 years, there's a new stage to the providence. Because God is driving history. God is driving history back to the kingdom of heaven on earth. We are in the time of the second coming of Christ. And with that, I'm going to turn off my camera. This is going up on YouTube tonight, and I'll talk to you guys live.